Hi everyone and welcome back to Concepts. In this update we've made so many improvements we decided to walk you through all of them step by step. My name is Lasse and today we'll take a deep dive into Concepts 5.0. If you're already familiar with Concepts, you'll notice that it's still the same powerful app in its core, but better. It's gotten a facelift, a performance boost and a large number of other upgrades based on your feedback. If you're new to Concepts, you may want to check out our quick start video covering the very basics of the app. Link in the description. As with any big update, a lot of thought has been put into this version to enhance the experience and to allow us to build more powerful features in updates to come. Concepts 5.0 is more flexible, more compact, easier to learn and most importantly, adapts to your own personal workflow. Let's dive into it. The first thing you'll notice is the new user interface. On the top here, there's a status bar accompanied by five movable elements. The tool wheel, layers, imports, which now includes objects and libraries, precision and exports. And these are removable, so you can cater to your current project and create a workspace to your liking. To pick something up, just do a tap, hold and drag on any one of these and it'll pop up this map of alignment options, showing where you can place it. Then just let go to drop it in place. This is the central element called the tool wheel and it's got a few different alternatives for alignment. Again, tap and hold on one of the tools in this case and start dragging. You can dock it into one of the corners like so, which will enable the familiar spinning action of the wheel. On the iPhone version, this is the only option because of how compact it is. On the side, we have our classic toolbar option, placing the tools on the side here. Personally, I like to use the tool wheel, which by the way, you can scale to your liking by pinching in or out on the wheel. The whole interface is designed so it's always within reach, but gets out of the way when needed. If you're drawing or moving things nearby, it'll just fade away. You can also minimize the labels by swiping them out towards the edge or hide them completely by swiping again, in case you find yourself in need for more real estate. Now, let me go through each element in order from top to bottom. On the top here, we have the status bar. Tap on the corner here and it'll take you back to the gallery. The breadcrumbs here display your current project's name, the name of the current drawing you're on and finally the current active layer, all of which you can quickly edit with a tap and hold. Tapping on the middle button enters the in-app store, where you can purchase special features and such. More about those later. You can see the zoom and rotation info here, stroke measurements will also be displayed on the status bar, but I'll get back to those once we start making selections. The gear icon opens your settings, where you can manage your drawing specific options like the artboard settings, grids, scaling and units. The next tab has various settings like pressure curves for all the major stylus manufacturers or in this case of the Apple Pencil options for finger specific actions and palm rejection. Lastly in settings you can configure various gesture shortcuts that will help you in being more productive. Back to the status bar we have help where you can find our latest articles, tutorials, the manual and our famous ask us anything button. This is in case you get stuck with something. Now let's move on and see exactly how this new tool wheel works. So there are 8 favorite tool presets or tool spots if you like that make switching between tools fast during your workflow. Each of these favorites has its own set of preferences including size, opacity, smoothing and of course access to the copy color wheel. You can see all of these presets with a tap or just slide your finger across one to quickly adjust your current setting. If you want to access the full configuration panel, tap on the currently active tool. First we've got a preview space where you can test things out, followed by a collection of brushes and tools you can choose from. Down here, you can set 4 quick access points for each preference.
There's also a reset button in case you want to go back to factory settings. The other important tab here is for color management. This section will allow you to create and share your own color schemes. By tapping the color preview here, you can set a starting point from the color wheel. In case you want something more custom, place your finger on one of these values and start sliding. You can individually adjust RGB values as well as hue, saturation and value of your color. All of these can be typed in as well with a tab. Once you have a color you're happy with, you can tap and hold the color preview and drop it into one of these palettes in the middle. You can have up to 8 colors in each palette. If you want a new palette, tap the add button on the right here. You can also drag in colors from already existing palettes, rearrange the ones you have, or throw away the ones you're having second thoughts on. Tap and hold the palette name itself to change the name or to get rid of it. If you'll notice down below, we also have dynamic palettes. These provide suggestions based on mathematical models of color theory and as the name suggests, these change automatically based on the current active color on the preview. Now let's go ahead and make these palettes accessible on the canvas. Tap on any palette to activate it. You'll know it's active when it has a black border around it. When you exit the color tab, you can now scrub through them here by the tool wheel. These will always appear in the same order you activated them in the Colors tab. So now you can access all your favorite colors by simply tapping on them. Remember that if you've activated any dynamic palettes, those will always change according to the currently active color, as opposed to my palettes, which will always remain just the way you set them in the color menu. But why are they called palettes, you might ask? Traditionally palettes are specifically meant for mixing colors, right? Well, in fact they are, and you can. Just tap and hold and you can now mix your colors by scrubbing left and right. One of our top requested features has definitely been a color picker, and I'm excited to say, we've got you covered. Open the color wheel, tap the picker icon, and there it is. Just drag the crosshair over any color you want, release, and there's your color. The upper half of the ring represents what you're about to pick and the lower one shows the current color of your tool. Because we're working with vectors here, we can actually ignore the background color and capture the opacity of that specific spot in addition to the color. This gets handy for color accuracy when mixing for example watercolor strokes. However, if we're picking a color from an image, like this photo, the color will be picked with full opacity. Now let's say you're looking to adapt all the properties of a previously drawn stroke. You can do that too. Just tap the tool icon appearing above the ring and it'll adapt those settings to your active tool slot. Making selections is one of the key features and concepts and 5.0 further enhances it by adding the ability to append and remove strokes. Basically you get more accuracy on what you're selecting. Let's start a selection by tap and holding the canvas. What you should see is a crosshair appear. If not, check down at the bottom to make sure the item picker is enabled. It cycles between a few options. Now try dragging over a stroke and once it highlights, you can let go and it'll select it. Tap off and it'll deselect. Let's go a step further. Let's say I want two or three specific strokes. Tap and hold, drag over one stroke until it highlights then try tapping with another finger anywhere on the screen. It'll add that stroke to the selection. Tap and hold, drag over another stroke and tap again. Keep doing this and you can continue adding strokes to your selection. Note that if you try to select a stroke that's already selected, you'll see a minus sign and the item will be removed from the selection. Another way of making selection is by using the lasso tool. You can toggle it by tapping the item picker down here. Then just drag your finger over several strokes at once to select them. You can also add to your selection here, 
Just run your finger around multiple sets to select or deselect them. Again, everything starts with a tap and hold. The other options down here are filters, like choosing whether the selection includes partial strokes or locked items. You can also decide if you're making selection from all layers or just the active one. As you probably noticed, there's a third selection mode you can toggle with a tap and hold, and that is the color picker. The selection option that appears will always be based on what you've been using last. While you have something selected, let's talk about iOS 11 a bit. One of the main functions, especially on iPad, is the ability to drag and drop almost everything between apps. So while you have a selection, tap and hold again within the bounds and you'll see a preview of that selection, which now can be dragged outside the app. Make sure you're holding the selection with one finger and use another finger, like your thumb, to swipe up the bottom of the screen. You may need to do it once or twice, depending if you want to drag to an already opened app or something on the favorites bar. Now we can drop the graphic in, for example, Apple Notes if we want, or in an email, or maybe we're doing some line work in concepts that we then want to color in, say, Procreate. The format of this can be PNG or Vector, depending on the target app. This also works the other way around. Maybe you're looking at images in Google, or photos, or something that inspires you. Just do the same thing in reverse. You can also drag in text snippets and colors from other apps. Now let's move on to the other workspace menus. When you tap on a menu, it'll activate. The precision menu has its own dedicated set of toggles for grids, snap, measurements, and shape guides individually. Each one of these can quickly be toggled on or off. We also have preferences that can be edited by tapping on the options or values. We'll go over precision tools and shape guides more thoroughly in another video. If you turn on measure while something is selected, as I mentioned before, you'll see the length of the stroke up here in the status bar. This is a measurement you can also type in by doing a tap and hold on the value. Layers haven't changed too much in 5.0. The thumbnails are slightly bigger for clarity, Layer commands can be found by tapping on layers as usual. You can rearrange them by doing a tap, hold, drag, or quickly find what you're looking for by scrubbing on the eyeballs to enter focus mode. This one really helps when you're making selections between multiple layers. Finally, you can decide whether to manage your layering manually or to let the app establish a single layer for each type of tool automatically. When you tap the import menu, it'll automatically display your most recently used object pack. For those who don't know, you can create your own personal object packs in the app, which can then be used in any drawing or even used in iMessage as personalized stickers. Also now in 5.0, once you set up a free account, your object packs can be synced between devices and even shared with other people. Let's tap more, and you'll see that there's a selection of pre-made objects in our market for a variety of use cases. These are all royalty free, so you can use them in any project. My Objects is where you store and manage your purchased and self-made packs, as well as shared ones you subscribe from others. And then we have the Import tab, from which you can do imports as usual. It includes a recently used section with 10 of your last imported items. As I mentioned, object packs can now be made to sync between devices. This will require a free concepts account, which you can create by going to the gallery or store and tapping the profile picture over here. It's totally free and comes with other benefits too. Once you set up an account, all of your color palettes, gesture preferences and stylus settings, as well as object packs and other purchases will sync between your devices. Note that your drawings will not be syncing yet, we're still working on that. Going forward we have the export menu. Give it a tap and you'll get a range of both standard and vector export options to choose from. Tap the export button up top and you'll be given a preview of your image while you choose the destination. You might notice that a few of the export options along with some other features in the app are locked. Most of these features are unlocked during your trial period, but for a permanent unlock, you can visit our store, which again, can be found up here. 
There are several ways you can unlock features to fit your specific needs. Some can be purchased individually through in-app purchase, our Pro Pack is an awesome option for creative professionals, or you can choose to get everything we offer via our new Easy Everything option. This includes access to all object packs, all pro features, PDF imports, my own objects, etc. going forward. The subscription option also brings in some new service-based features, like live asset sharing of created object packs and color palettes, which is useful when you're working as a part of a team. As we've always done in the past, we'll be adding more to all levels, free, pro and subscription, every 4-6 to six weeks. That's all for now. Remember, if you have any questions, you can reach out for our support through help, where you can also find the full user manual and other helpful materials. If you follow us on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter, you'll know that we love to share your work. Just remember to use our hashtag concepts app and we'll cheer for you. Leave a comment, leave a like, but most importantly, keep sketching. Mm -hmm.